Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown, and I wanted to bring back a guest that we had on earlier this year to talk about politics because, well, the youth need to get involved more, and why not get our youngest guest to ever appear on the show in the hot seat, in studio in the hot seat, and that is Isaiah Nolasco. I hopefully pronounced his name right, and he's going to tell me if I did or did not. So, Isaiah, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me once again. I'm very excited to go for round two. <laughs> <laughs> Always up for round two. Yeah. So, Isaiah, uh, let's let's talk about the biggest story of the news right now, and that's the UCP leadership yes, race. And then we'll yes. talk about the uh, the per, uh, the People's Party of Canada as your supporter later on. Um, from a youth's perspective, what are you hearing from the candidates? Are you following it uh, because you are a People's Party of Canada federal supporter as much as you would be following federal politics? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's it's just as important because um, we're electing our premier. And even if we had an NDP premier, I believe uh, it's important for everybody to get on vote because uh, you can't let 2% of the people decide who's going to lead our uh, province, right? So um, I've been following a little bit. Um, and uh, so, as a fifteen-year-old, <laughs> can you buy a membership? Yes. Have you, yeah. So you have a membership. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess let's ask the million-dollar question to get this party started, and that is: Have you picked a horse to back yet? Are you backing a certain candidate, or yeah. are you still deciding, like many other UCP candidates? Very are? much, yeah, very much still deciding. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I try to hear out all candidates. Um, waiting, I haven't actually seen the. The last debate, but I'm gonna catch that soon. The Western Standard debate that was just last week with the front runners. Wasn't there one like a couple days ago? <laughs> oh, the yeah, yeah, Alberta yeah. Teachers Association out in. Was that? Was that? Or are you talking or about the me- was medicine it a forum Hattel? or something? <laughs> sure. Anyway, <Yeah. laughs> oh, I think you might be talking about the one up in Lloyd Minster where oh, they did we... one and there was a pot. Anyway, um, let's talk about the front runners. Yeah. Because you seem to be knowledgeable in all things politics, so let's talk about Danielle Smith. Yeah. From your perspective, what are the pros and cons that Danielle Smith brings to this leadership from a youth's perspective? Well, I certainly do believe that um, the Alberta Sovereignty Act is something that it is very interesting to look at and. Uh, whether it's that or the Autonomy for Albertans Act that Brian Jean wants. Uh, I think it's something that we need. Um, but uh, that, that's that's sort of one of the pros I have, I, le- I like about her. And uh, she's been in the hot seat uh, opposition leader as well. And that's that's very important because she knows how to challenge... Because um, she's going into election, right? She knows how to challenge the opposition. If by chance she loses and uh, she has to face Notley in the in the... In the premier's yeah, chair. Exactly, yeah. She she knows she has that experience. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the net zero climate plan that she talked about. Uh, that That's the one thing that kind of threw me off. But uh, Hearing that a lot from a lot of people in your in your position, yes, that, that was yes. the one that sort of irked them a little bit. Um, I want to uh, go, go from a youth's perspective, though. Is there anything that she has said? And yet again, there's policies still being announced, platforms still being announced. You talked about the Sovereignty Act, but is there anything that gives you hope that if she does become premier, she'd be able to address some of the issues that are facing the youth of today? I think, I think she... She might uh, do a good job with that. I, I don't know her very well. I, I started following her um, when I first actually heard she announced. She was my very first preferred uh, candidate. Um, but I'll have to I'll have to do some more research and get to know her a little better, <laughs> of course. But um, I know she has lots of youth support, and that's very important for sure. Um, the next one, who is the kind of the heir apparent to the caucus favorite, yes. is Travis Taves, former yes. finance minister. Um, now, for anyone who's watched the show before or read any of my writings, you know I, I compared him to Michael Ignatieff because he's yeah. he's like the lecture, the professor. He lectures a lot of things, but he doesn't talk about what he's going to do. But he's going to tell you how he's going to fix it. What are you hearing, and what are you seeing about Travis Taves? Is there anything? positive that you're seeing from him or anything negative that you're seeing from him yeah so i went into the race and i went into the debates um not liking him very much <laughs> because i i I'd see him as the establishment uh the front runner for for the party right um the candidate of the establishment uh i watched the debate and he actually performed uh pretty well and um i'm still trying to figure out who is very first on my ballot because i am doing the ranked system and he very well could be an option. 
he could be an option. So you're, yeah. so it sounds like, and and I say this with respect to the other candidates who are running, uh, Daniel Smith and Travis Taves are the apparent front runners in this mm-hmm. race. Brian Jean as well, which we're going to be sitting down on August 22nd to sit down and chat with him about his leadership bid. But these two are potentially going to be the next uh, leader and premier. Um, it's it's odd to hear someone in your position say, I'm, I'm looking at both candidates seriously because... I was at the Western Standard debate, and there was a very like love hate divide between yes, the candidates. The two. Who were, how do you? Is there? Do you think there's a lot more people out there like yourself who are actually giving honest consideration to all candidates right now? Uh, I certainly hope so, because, like <laughs> I said, it, it it very well it it does. It it's the person who's going to bring us to the next election. Um, it's the person who's going to lead this province up until the next election. And it's the person who can have long-term effect. So I think looking at all sides is very, very important. Um, yeah. So talking about the other sides, Brian Jean, former Wild Rose leader, he would see more of the, uh, he, like you said, you talked about the autonomy that he wants to bring back to Alberta. Um, what's your thoughts on Brian Jean right now? Is he uh, is he also a consideration for you right now? Yeah. And I'm going to ask you that for all the candidates. Yes, and if you say yes much. to all of them, I'm going to say, "Wow, you are very open to a lot of yes. candidates." Yes. Um. You know what? Yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> because um. Well, early in the race, Brian Jean was projected to be the automatic uh, consensus leader. Uh, we really haven't seen much media coverage with him. He's just he's been kind of missing in action in the media and he hasn't been getting the hype that a lot of people have have been expecting him to get right um but i think i i like um his autonomy for albertans act he actually published his policies i believe yesterday or pretty recently on his website and uh from what i've seen they they match what uh what i'm looking for so what are you looking for in a candidate right now we'll talk about some of the other candidates here in a few minutes but at the end of the day you're going to have to make a decision, and you're going to have to make one decision. Yes. Who's going to be your first pr- preferred candidate? Yeah. What are you, Isaiah, looking for as that first choice? Because we talked about the three front runners, but you have to make up your decision. And I'm not trying to put you on the hot speed seat here, but what is your decision going to come down to? Yeah, so my decision, uh, just like a lot of other uh, UCP people... It's it's uh, taking the fight to Ottawa and not uh, splitting apart our own assembly because uh, we're Albertans and we're supposed to stay united. I do believe that Albertans uh, are also Canadians and Canadians must stay united as well. Um, but we cannot continue to let Ottawa push us around and give other provinces special privileges and uh, not consider us. Uh, that's one of the reasons, uh, or the one of the, I guess, voting... Uh, things i'm looking for the things that i'm gonna vote for <laughs> uh one of the other things i am really looking into is um the ambulance crisis of course uh that's that's some that's a provincial jurisdiction and right now uh there's there's a crisis there you know you call an ambulance and they're delayed sometimes and it's happening costs lives it affects many people and that that's something that i think needs to be examined have you heard anything from any of the candidates to address that? Let's talk about that ambulance crisis because there's a lot of people, a lot of Albertans, and I'm one of them, that if something happens to me, if I have an attack that immobilizes me, I need to, and my husband isn't able to get me out of the house, I need to call an ambulance. And what we're hearing is, even in Calgary, in Airdrie, there are wait times that could be detrimental to your health. Have you heard anything from the candidates? Because if it's something that you just brought up, so I'm assuming you're trying to see if the candidates are actually talking about it. Very this. much, yeah. That's something that I, I kind of want to get answers for. Um, I haven't heard much from any candidates yet. Uh, again, this is fairly early in the race, and uh, I think uh, I'm going to have to wait for the last two months to really, really decide who I'm going to put first. Well, if there's ever a time to clip out a part of this interview and put it up on Twitter, which we will do Monday after this airs, uh, we will make sure that we get answers for you. Because I think there's a lot of Albertans who are thinking that. Not even here in Calgary, but rural Albertans, right? Because we always think about urban centers because we live in urban centers. But rural Albertans are struggling even worse right now, right? Very much, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you, you think of the people up in Camrose, you think of the people in Brooks, you think of all those people, even little uh, towns we've never heard of. 
those people are being affected very much as well and um they they're they're people just like the rest of us so i feel like uh if we're truly wanting equality from for albertans then we should have equality for every single little town that is in this province there's there's concern that the next leader is gonna will be going up against Rachel Notley. I, I, I don't think there's concern about that. That that is a foregone conclusion that they'll be going up against Rachel Notley. Out of the three candidates that we've mentioned so far, is there one that you think has a better chance? Because polls are polls, and you and I will both agree that a poll is a snapshot in history, and it does not mean anything at the end of the day. <laughs> but is there? Do you believe that the three front runners, Brian Jean, Danielle Smith, and Travis Taze, has a shot of winning in twenty twenty three when the next election gets called? Yeah, um, I, I I do believe um, clearly Smith uh, that people know her name, people. You know, she had her own show. She was the leader of the Wild Rose, leader of the opposition. She has that record. Um, Travis Taves, kind of new to everybody. I had no clue who he was. Uh, I actually saw your Instagram story, and I was like, oh, who's this guy? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, you kind of introduced me to him. But um, I think uh, the best one right now is probably Danielle Smith. Um, I also do look at Rebecca Schultz. um, That She isn't really talked about the front runners, but... I think she she could really um, bring some votes to the UCP from other parties that are not just from the NDP. I'm talking about the Alberta Party, uh, even some Alberta Liberals. So, yeah. You you mentioned Rebecca Schultz, so let's talk about her. Calgary Shaw MLA, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, down in your neck of the woods because you're from Southwest. Yeah. So yeah, she's my uh, MLA. She's your MLA. Okay. Um, What's I talked. I was at an event with uh, her and Stephanie Cousy last night, the last week for those who are listening to this after we've recorded. <laughs> and people who I talked to in that room said she's a hard worker. She's a constituents person. She goes door knocks with uh, to get people out there. What are you hearing about Stephanie? Uh, not Stephanie Cousy, but Rebecca, <laughs> Rebecca. Schultz. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did have someone actually. Uh, well, it was kind of funny because I was actually on her website and. Uh, not even literally not an exaggeration not two seconds later the guy came to my door knocking one of her um door knockers came i was like oh what i like i showed him like i was on your website like (laughs) that's so cool uh so yeah we we chatted a little bit and he gave me one of those uh flyers that we (laughs) have right behind us right yeah (laughs) and uh yeah so i I, i'm trying to do a little bit more research on her um do you do you think it's a benefit for her to have people like rona ambrose former federal uh, conservative leader brad wall former saskatchewan premier backing her in this race yeah, very much. I think it's very, if I was in her position, I'd feel really comfortable with that. Uh, I think uh, she 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 probably has the confidence to uh, do a good job as premier. <laughs> well, I'm assuming she'll very much like that. Uh, I want to talk about the other candidates, and I I, I, I no mean no disrespect to the candidates, but we're going to do sort of rapid fire here um, because there's a lot that we have to get through, and then we're going to talk about federal politics, and then we're going to talk about PPC because we have a short period of time. Because I understand that you have some chores to go do of fixing up a house, so we want yes. to make sure you get back <laughs> to doing that. Um, but let's talk about uh, Rajan Sani yes. and Leela here, two of the two of the two, two remaining women in the race. Uh, do you see anything uh, that you like from those two candidates? right now because they would seem more on the progressive side mm. of the political spectrum while you're more on the libertarian side very of much the... yeah um yeah so i was actually looking at uh rajan sawney's uh campaign earlier because uh angela pitt endorsed her and um i am hearing a lot of good things from angela pitt uh she since actually stepped back from her campaign which i was wondering um maybe that i that don't know what's going something. on there but you know who knows what's going on but um you know, I'll still continue to look at her platform. Um, and Leela here? Leela here is, you know, I've, I've heard her name very early in the race. Um, I, I remember in the early polls, she was actually doing pretty well. And now that kind of all these other people stole the the energy away, she's kind of being forgotten about. But um, I kind of have her placed last on my ballot <laughs> because I... She kind of says the same things, and I don't really know much of her policies. Even though she was the very first candidate to post her policies, um, she doesn't really vocalize them in the debates, and she doesn't really vocalize them 
uh, nope, overall. Understandable. Yeah. And the last candidate yeah. is Todd Lowen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Grand Prairie Pe- or Peace Notley, yeah. however central. you want to. Yeah. yeah, Peace <laughs> Notley. You know. You can look at the map and you know better <laughs> central. than Central. Your mind is amazing, man. Much, um, yeah. But... Todd Lowen, independent MLA, running for the UCP leadership. He's more of the Wild Rose party because he was a former Wild Rose. He joined the UCP. Yes. Uh, where's he in your thinking right now? Um, You know what? I've had a couple people tell me that he is a really good option and I should look into him. And I'm certainly going to do that. Um, I was invited to an event. I unfortunately couldn't make it. But uh, next event he comes, I'll, I'll definitely go look at him. He seems very interesting. Um and uh, he's vocalized his opposition to vaccine passports and lockdowns, and I really appreciate that. You, and I mean respect when I say this to you, because you're an oddity in this in this world right now, mm. because you don't hear a lot of 15-year-old kids being able to talk about, A, politics, but being able to tell you who the candidates are and what they stand for, because you've done the research. Um, while membership uh, sales have been passed while this mm. airs, it ended on uh, Friday the 12th at, I think, 5 o'clock, are your friends, are your relatives, are you getting people involved in politics as well? Because last time we spoke, you said that you were talking to your school friends and yes. they looked at you and they went, okay, you're crazy for being involved <laughs> in politics. Yeah, yeah. But now they're getting of the age where they're going to be starting to think about voting here in three years, actually in elections. Much, yeah. Are people getting involved your age in this leadership race, do you think? Yeah, uh, 100%. Uh, I, I know... Our- ton of friends who are actually voting in this and uh it's really really important because you are like i said you're choosing your next premier <laughs> and i think um those who really the, the the kids who are under 18 uh, over 14 if they really want to have a voice in politics they will go and do that and it's 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 one on like it's only ten dollars <laughs> and are you getting a cross-section of friends who are supporting different candidates or are and i, I mean this with i'm gonna just ask the question are they in, are they supporting one candidate over the other or are there uh friends that you have who are your age who are supporting different candidates um i actually it's it's the same ones it's a mix or <laughs> it's it's, all, it's the two uh it's it's the two right, front runners yeah it, well it's right now it's daniel smith and travis De- um Todd Lowen. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So those two are the ones I'm hearing a lot um, from my friends and uh, continue to look into those two for sure. Uh, I want to turn to a federal issue now yeah. because, like I said, I want to just make sure we keep on time here. And the Conservative Party of Canada is coming up with their leadership race. You yeah. are not a Conservative supporter. You are a People's Party of Canada, Maxime Bernier all the way, a supporter. Um are you watching this race? Are you paying attention closely to what's happening with either going to be Sheree or Pierre Polyev? Um, I was. Uh, now I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> you know what? Um, I'm focused on the People's Party, and uh, I, I don't really care what happens there. Uh, <laughs> it's respectfully. Uh, you know what? Um, the Conservatives will choose their next member or, or their next leader, and that's that's totally up to them. You, you, you talked about the people's party so let's 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 jump on that for the last yeah. few minutes here people's party of canada maxime bernier as of recording this mm-hmm. he is making his way in through western canada he's stopping in alberta here in northern part of alberta then going to bc and then i believe going to saskatchewan um he was here recently you and i met at the barbecue that they or the stampede breakfast yes. that they had um w- why Max? And I asked this beforehand, but I'm going to keep on asking this because I think I would ask yeah, this yeah, yeah. to anyone who's supporting somebody. Why do you continue to support him? Um, I, I like his idea of putting Canadians first. Um, I, I do believe that uh, foreign aid is something that um, we need to have a serious discussion about. Um, he was talking about all his policies in the People's Party that he has now. Uh, he was doing that back when he was running for conservative leader. Hasn't changed a thing. I really appreciate the honesty. Um like I said, putting Canadians first is what I really, really appreciate. So what do you mean by that? Uh, so with with regards to the foreign aid, I believe, um, like he's said many times, we can't afford to be spending uh, millions of dollars in China for them to use it for climate change. Uh, I think a lot of people know they probably won't use it for climate change. <laughs> uh, we could very well use that money here f- to you know, lift water advisories for Indigenous peoples and... Uh, and even if uh, we were wanting to look at a free dental plan, I'm pretty sure Canadians would 
be a lot happier to know that all that money, instead of sending all that money to other countries, we can have a solid dental care plan here in Canada. You talk about freedoms and uh, putting Canadians first. Um, he was in this hot seat and he took questions from me as well. And I, I he, he seems to be a very personable person who's willing to chat with anyone, whether you're a liberal, conservative, NDP, anyone. And he'll have a conversation with you and he'll answer the questions that you have. Um, is it refreshing from someone your age to see a candidate or a politician like that who doesn't care about your age, doesn't care about your nationality, doesn't care about your gender, but more cares about what you have and what your opinions are of how to make this country better. Yeah, I, it's really, really refreshing because, um, you know, I'm young <laughs> and it's it's good to have a good entry uh, person to look up to, for sure. Um, I, I talked to him when he was here in Calgary. We had kind of like a private members uh, event and me and him talked for a while and I really seemed to enjoy his charisma and his... Um, he was very, very down to earth. Very down to earth guy for sure. Do you think he's connecting with people? Very much, yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are looking away and they're 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 saying, "Well, you're going to lose some votes because of the conservative leadership race." But um, I think people are making that connection with him, and those people who have been following him, and maybe those new people who are just finding out about him, they they really see him as a, a good alternative. You, you seem to be a policy wonk. You seem to know your policy when it comes to certain pol uh, parties, and particularly the PPC. So I'm going to ask you a few policy questions here. Where does the PPC stand on natural resources? Do you know? Natural resources. Um, so when it comes to natural resources, of course, we, we want to build a pipeline. <laughs> uh with respect to provincial jurisdictions, um, I know certain resources, I believe, are up to the provinces, and we would like to leave that up to the provinces 100%. Uh, with regards to pipelines, uh, we will use, I believe, I can't exactly remember what part of the Constitution it is, but we will use... Um, the fact that you know that it's the Constitution that we're going to use, yes. it puts you way above a lot of adults who are voting in elections right yeah. now. So <laughs> just give yourself a break, man. You don't need to know, but you know it's the Constitution. Yeah. He, he said it, he gave me, he listed off about five different sections of the Constitution. I went, what? Yeah. I, I didn't even know that clause existed, but yeah. he's one of these people that has that. Yeah, so, you know, um, we, we like... Uh, we like oil of course because you know we can build windmills and that's something we can do but at the end of the day you're not transporting windmills uh you're not making as much money as you are when you're transporting oil you know that that's you can sell that to all different um countries right um that's why we i believe it's more accessible and will create many jobs if we build the pipeline from here to wherever we want it's fine you, you talked about personal freedoms in the health care. Uh, Maxine has been very upfront, saying that it's a personal choice if you get the vaccine or if you don't. He doesn't believe in segregation of between unvaccinated and vaccinated. Why do you think that's a winning strategy for the PPC? Well, I think I think it's um, I think it's just letting humans be humans. You know, making their choices. Um, at the end of the day, we don't need someone in the authority seat telling us what to do uh, when it comes to these very personal decisions. Um, I don't think it matters. <laughs> you know, you're you're sitting in uh you're sitting in uh or you go to a restaurant. You know, if the vaccines work, then then why why have a vaccine passport? And if the vaccines don't work, then you know why have a vaccine passport? Right? It's either if the vaccines way. Vaccines don't work. Why do we have vaccines? That's all I have to say there. Um, last question on policy, and then we'll just start wrapping it up here. Is um, separation? Yeah, is very big. Right you talked about the provincial side, about autonomy, about the Sovereignty Act that Daniel Smith is putting forward. Um, there is a rise of people in this province who are very much, we need to leave Ottawa behind, we need to leave Canada, yeah. because we're not getting a fair share. Where does the People's Party of Canada fall into the separation, autonomy, sovereignty debate that's yes. going on here in Alberta right now? So when it comes to that, um, I can flat out say that People's Party does not support separation, uh, but we will give full autonomy and we will give more privileges to provinces and let them govern themselves a little bit more. Um, we're not focused in a big government in Ottawa. We want to downsize that and let provinces make their own decisions. That being said, 
Um, we believe we must keep Canada united because um, that is the most important thing. And, you know, we can we know it, it, it can be a thing because, you know, you look at the convoy. When have you ever seen uh, people from Quebec and people from Alberta sing the anthem together? It's It was unity and it was a really good point in history. And we know we can do it for sure. We... We usually wrap up these shows with thanking you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up a little bit for you here because I love giving giving people like yourself or anyone who wants to come on the show a, 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 a voice to talk, and I want to get your opinion on some politicians and I want your honest to goodness. Yes. Pol- uh, <laughs> I see your mom squeaming a little bit over there right now. <laughs> yes, her his mother is in the room with us. Yeah. Um, but I want to get your honest opinion on some of the politicians. And I'm going to start with the big one. And I'm just going to let you talk, and I'm not going to interrupt you, but what's your honest opinion of Justin Trudeau? Uh, where do I start? <laughs> so Justin Trudeau, um, you know, he ran on a more liberal campaign. Uh, when I say liberal, I mean actual liberal um, campaign when he was, in, back in 2015, you know, he was saying things like we won't take your guns he was saying things like just like we'll legalize marijuana and all that uh certainly he did that but now he's going back on all of those promises to gain popularity and it seems like he's pandering to the left here uh just to stay in power and we we just heard that uh singh said you know if there's no dental care and plan by the end of this year the agreement's done so it, it's he's a power hungry politician simply looking for votes and will literally buy votes with the money we don't have how about Pierre Polyev? Pierre Polyev is a hypocrite, and uh, I, I. Why do you say that? <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> and PG PG thirteen. That's okay. So when uh, Pierre, when Pierre earlier on in um, I believe it was April twenty twenty one, Pierre Polyev t- made a tweet and he said, um, you know, Trudeau. Or is delaying us right now. We need to close our borders, and we need more vaccines for everyone. Um, instead, we're dealing with a third wave. He tweeted something along those lines. Uh, a couple days later, you know, Maxime was arrested for uh, holding a, a gathering with his with his supporters, um, not worrying about any restrictions. And uh, here, Pierre Polyev was saying things like, "We need to close down our borders." And now, of course, we all know that he seems like the savior of the Conservative Party and all that. But uh, you need to look at his voting record; uh, it, it really isn't as clean as people think. John Trey. John Trey. Uh, <laughs> Do you? Okay, I'm going to ask this question yeah. because you follow politics a little bit, so I'm going to ask this. Do you think he's a liberal because he ran the uh, Quebec Liberals, even though he was a progressive conservative yeah. under Brian Mulroney? So here's the thing. Um, I I think I like a, I like liberal. guys who actually <laughs> thinks before they answer questions. So, I thank I, I thank you for that. <laughs> so liberal. So yes, he he did run for the Quebec Liberals, correct? Yeah, he ran. Uh, the, he was the premier of. The yeah, province. he he was. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, the Quebec the BC liberal. Yeah, you know, like the, the Alberta Liberals. Here's the Alberta Liberal isn't isn't as anything close to the federal Liberals, right? It's um depending on what province you're in, every uh, every ideology has its own ca- like category. For example, the Conservative Party in BC isn't doing too well right now because yeah. it's not popular there. So they're probably I don't follow BC politics, but my guess is if there's power-hungry politician, they're going to want to pander to the left. Yeah. Now, here in Alberta, the Alberta liberals are pandering to the right because that's just the, that's just kind of how Alberta is. Uh, in Quebec, that's a whole different story. Um, I don't know much about Quebec politics, but uh, to answer your question, I see him kind of as the... S- send- he's on the... He's on the left of his party, but I, I think he does have a little bit more old-fashioned conservative values. Joe Meat saying? Uh, he's a nice guy. <laughs> he, and we'll leave it at yeah. that. Um, and my last one is uh, here, Jason Kenney. Uh, you know what? I think, Do you think it was his time to go? Yeah, I think so. Um, when your party is that divided, he did the right thing and he surprised a lot of people. Um, he did 
like I said, he did the right thing, stepped down, and now we're going through this process. Um, you know, 51% wanted to keep him, but when it's that split off, uh, I don't think I would be really confident heading into an election if it was 50, 51, 49. Yeah, something like that, right? I wouldn't be that confident heading into the next election. So I think he did what was best for his party and what was best for the province by, um, by stepping down. I want, to take, I want you to take a moment before you answer this question, but it's my last question before we wrap up, before we actually wrap up, I should say. Um, and that is, speak to the camera for a second. Yeah. Talk to the 15-year-old kids who are listening to this, your friends who aren't involved in politics. Tell them why it's important for your generation to get involved in politics right now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, politics, as much as I hate it, politics affects everybody uh, politicians affect everyone and as much as we hate them especially I know younger people probably resent politicians it is important to get the people that we like in there that way we don't have that hatred towards politicians and then the next day we're gonna have um, just a new future and we're looking towards a new day a new generation for our children and um, we really got to think about what what the future holds and i think the best way to do that is by using democracy as it's meant to be used and uh sh showing your voice to the polls and showing your voice to the politicians and showing your voice to the media and uh, i think that's that's really important to do and uh yeah awesome isaiah thank you so much for doing this this has been an honor and a pleasure uh, it's yeah. always great to have someone come in and sit down because i like the one-on-one -on -one personal aspect instead of via zoom and the glitching of the yeah. internet <laughs> but i want to i appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to do this and thank you to your mother for dropping you off um i i i, I I could not have asked for a better guest. I know we've just scratched the surface, but we will make sure we have you back on once again because you have a bright future in politics, man, and I'm willing to come along for the ride with you. Because <laughs> I think uh, people like yourself who get involved at an early age are much needed in this democracy. So Very well. You. Well, one last thing I wanted to kind of just throw in. Uh, I'm eligible to run if there is a an election in 2025 so guys if there's an election in 2025 look out for my name Isaiah Nolasco purple sign people's party of Canada <laughs> do you know what riding you'd run in uh you know what I I think if they don't change the yeah. ridings up yeah so my my candidate he's been telling me he's been keeping my seat warm <laughs> and uh I, I I'm looking into uh the riding that I currently live in Calgary Minpour so um if you know, if there is an election by 2025, I certainly will put my name forward and uh, hopefully run Calgary Minipur. Awesome. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, I think we need to contact Dave Berta from Dave Berta Podcast and make sure your yes, name gets yes. on that list for 2025 upcoming election. Um, Isaiah, thank you so much for thank doing this. Thank you very much, Ryan. An honor and a pleasure as always. <laughs> and remember, everyone, uh, the links to Isaiah's Twitter and Instagram are in the show notes. So if you want to follow a youth in politics, highly recommend it. Um, but also get out from behind social media. As I just told you to go follow someone, now I'm going to tell you to go get out from behind social media and actually talk to someone. It's a weird concept. Yeah. Up, but it actually makes our democracy, our society, and us as a people much better. So with that, have yourself a nice day. Remember, everyone, keep talking.